size and speed two of the biggest attributes to have as a high school football player. And these are the two main criteria that Julian Edelman lacked in his early years in high school football. Today, if we look at the current four and five star recruits, they are literally superheroes compared to the average athlete. They're the ones getting recruited to Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, you name it. And hopefully most of us have heard the story of Rudy. You're five feet nothing. A hundred and nothing. And you got hardly a speck of athletic ability. And you hung in with the best college football team in the land for two years. Well, Julian's story isn't much different. As a freshman in high school, he was only five feet tall, weighing in at a measly 100 pounds. Bro, let that sink in. Like, look at this man on the field compared to everyone else. He looks like a six-year-old. And the sad part is that this just didn't affect him during sports. He got teased all the time in school. I, I know, I can't believe it, right? Getting teased in high school, what else is new? And there are reports of Julian Edelman going to his dad, crying, saying, Dad, when am I going to grow? I keep on getting teased in school. I'm sick and tired of this. And the fact that his dad, Francis Edelman, was his head coach growing up in Little League football, that didn't really make it any easier for him either. You could imagine your father being your head coach, how tough that could be at times and how hard he'd be on you. Do you ever think it was too much? Always. I always thought it was too much. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, Julian loves his father. I guess he was just showing him some of that tough love. But this man did not let that stop him. His dad definitely ingrained an all or nothing mentality because this kid just would not quit. Looking back to this kid's Little League highlight tapes, this guy was making plays. He was intercepting the ball, running like a bowling ball. No one could tackle him despite being like the smallest on the field. Y you cannot touch this guy. I mean, look at this. But did this skill transfer over? into high school? Well, yes and no. He was athletic, but just wasn't developed enough to perform at a high level. How big were you? My freshman year, I was 4'11", buck 05. He'd come in the room at night and say, Dad, when am I gonna grow? And I'd say, son, just hang in there. By his senior year, he was 5'10". Are you kidding me? That's a 10 inch growth spurt from freshman to senior year. So for all you late bloomers out there, don't give up because hopefully, just hopefully, your time will come just like it did for Julian Edelman. I'm 5'9 myself, but I never had a huge growth spurt like that. Like, just never happened. I was more of a steady grower, just slow and steady over time. So he had a huge growth spurt. Well, how did he perform? Well, he actually led his team to a 13-0 record his senior year in high school. And despite having a breakout season, no schools were actually interested in him. So he had to go the Juco route all the way to San Mateo. And he would actually end up winning the starting QB spot his first year there and ended up killing it, of course. He threw and ran for 31 touchdowns. Despite all that, he only had one D1 offer from Kent State. After all, he was only 5'10", which is much better from where he started, but still pretty short for a college QB. And hey, that's a D1 offer, so that is good enough in my books. I would not be complaining. And for those of you that don't know, I used to play Division II football, so I understand how the recruiting process works and how hard it can be to actually decide what school you want to go to, like what school wants you most. That can be a tough decision. But eventually, he ends up committing to Kent State and some of the players actually thought he was a kicker. That's pretty sad. And boy, were they in for a surprise. He walks up to the starting QB, and this guy's like 6'5", has a cannon for an arm, and he says, I quote, he said this in an interview, you might want to get used to doing that because that is the only thing you're going to be doing while I'm here. So it starts off like that, Julian? Bro, I would not ever imagine saying that to another teammate. Like, geez, bro, <laughs> calm down. But you know what? He was right because he ended up starting his first year. In fact, he went on to have one of the best careers at Kent State with an amassed 5,000 passing and 2,000 rushing yards and 52 touchdowns. That is crazy. Despite having this great career, Julian was not invited to the NFL Combine in 2009. Can you believe it? There were 328 players and he wasn't one of them. He knew he wasn't the typical style NFL QB, so he actually transitioned and started training as a wide receiver. So he's been playing QB, conditioned to play this one position his whole life. 
and just to make it to the NFL, he starts playing wide receiver. That's gotta be pretty tough. So he's grinding at 5 a.m., working out, and then Kent State's NFL Pro Day rolls around. And this is where things start to get interesting. He was lined up for the shuttle drill and clocked a 3.92. If any of you guys don't know how good that is, that was the fastest time that year out of any player in the NFL Combine. That is crazy fast. The scouts had him run it like three more times because they honestly could not believe it. And I'm not surprised, it makes sense. If you watch this guy's film, his change of direction is absolutely insane. So eventually the NFL draft rolls around and one round after another, Julian gets passed. But on the seventh round, Bill Belichick pulled the trigger on this kid and drafted him to the New England Patriots. Let's go. And their conversation on the phone went a little something like this. Bill Belichick said, we don't know what position you're gonna play, but you can play ball. Talk about an underdog story. This man never gave up. So if we fast forward, he's become one of the most productive players of all time in the Patriots franchise, especially in the playoffs. A lot of people hate on him in the regular season, but when playoffs rolled around, he balled out for sure. And guess what? He never even made a Pro Bowl, despite being a player with the most receiving yards in NFL playoff history and he ranked in like the top three and so many other statistics in the playoffs. But there was just one player that he could not pass up. One player that seemed to beat him out every single time. If we look at the top categories for playoff performances, most 100 yard receiving games in the playoffs, most receiving yards, and most catches in playoff history, there was always one player that beat him out.